Whew, man, I just fought some crazy Florida traffic. If you've ever been on I-4, it's nuts here. Now I'm running to get a little bit of lunch. We got cruise news to talk about. There's breaking news coming out about a Royal Caribbean ship being involved in like a crash over in Freeport, Bahamas. We got to talk about that. We got to talk about some prices going up for Carnival Cruise Line. We got a question of the day coming up. Hang on a second. Well, hey, Midships family, I am at a local establishment called Chipotle. Just finished touring the condo that I'm trying to get moved into here in the next couple of weeks. But we got cruise news to attend to, and I did some different things in yesterday's episode. So the question of the day today, what do you think about the new format with the two cameras in yesterday's episode? Should we keep doing it, or should I just go back to the one camera? Comment your answer down below. Let's roll the intro. Hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Now, we already have the question of the day out of our way, so we have just one more little bit of housekeeping. Don't forget the Midships merch giveaway ends this Friday. If you wanna get entered to win, there's a link in the description below this video. There's also one up here. And hey, we gotta talk about a cruise ship crash that just happened. Yeah, yet another one just went down. Let's talk about it. It's just breaking news from yesterday. It happened to Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Sea in Freeport, Bahamas. According to information coming out from Freeport, another vessel was involved as well, named the Tropic Freedom. And something happened where the Tropic Freedom ended up coming into contact with a concrete pier there, according to bystanders. And then she swung around and made contact with the aft or the rear or the booty of the Mariner of the Seas. And fairly substantial contact, as you might see from the pictures. And I say fairly substantial because the two ships hit hard enough to become lodged together. The main brunt of the damage, it happened up on deck seven for Mariner of the Seas. You can see there's a giant gaping hole that's been punched into the side of the ship. And essentially they had to bring out a tugboat to pull these ships apart. So finally doing what a tugboat's supposed to do, tugging. Very cool. Now the Tropic Freedom, it's a cargo vessel, not a massive one, but pretty sizable. And we've got some images coming in from the incident. This all went down in Grand Bahama in Freeport. If you've never been there, it's a sleepy little port. A lot of uh, industrial usage going on there. Not a lot going on at this port, so begs the question, how are we getting into this accident? As of now, no injuries have been reported because of the incident. It seems like Mariner of the Seas is gonna be able to continue on with her regular itinerary. I think she's supposedly heading over to their private island, Coco Key, today. So I'm not sure if this damage can be fixed in port or if the ship's gonna to have to be pulled from service. Again, don't roast me in the comments because I just say a ship might have to be pulled out of service when it was involved in an incident like this. It doesn't mean it's getting pulled out, but it might have to be, I'm not sure. I'm not a ship repairman or repair person. I don't know, but it is a possibility. So if you're on the next sailing of Mariner of the Seas, just keep a watchful eye out to see what's happening. All right, so we got to clear the air with some of the specialty dining options on board Carnival Cruise Line. There's some rumors going around. We all heard the news that prices are going up for some of the specialty restaurants. Well, there's certain restaurants though, at least on one ship, the Mardi Gras, that have been free the entire time the ship has been operating. Restaurants that you would pay for on other carnival ships. Yeah, I see you. I see you, Cucina de Capitano. You got me on the magic, but I, it was free on the Mardi Gras. Now, the ship's been in operation and the restaurants have been free. Let's learn a little bit more from Carnival's brand ambassador, John Heald, in a Facebook post about the future of these freebies. John says, Chibang, Cucina de Capitano, and Guy's Pick and Anchor will continue to be complimentary only on board the Carnival Mardi Gras. And apparently this is because the Mardi Gras has some issues with her dining spaces. And that's one of the things that I found most frustrating about being on this ship was the main dining rooms. It was a huge wait, wasn't a ton of space. So basically Carnival said early on, we're gonna open up these specialty restaurants to anybody, no upcharge and you can get in. And it, basically they're treating them like 
a main dining room restaurant, but there's different menus, as well as you can get some things off of the actual main dining menu. Like if it's lobster night, you can get that lobster in there. But here's the deal. This all stems from a big design problem in the Mardi Gras, and that is all of the food venues. You know it, if you follow this channel at all, I hated the main buffet on the Mardi Gras. I think it's the smallest, the dinkiest, and the worst laid out ship buffet I've ever been on. Now, with that said, hopefully these new iterations of this Excel class ship, the Jubilee and the Celebration, when they come out, hopefully Carnival has addressed some of these issues with congestion in areas, long waits, and just a general hard time to get in to eat in a lot of these venues. But for the foreseeable future, if you do cruise Mardi Gras, it's a great way to hop on board with some specialty dining that you don't have to pay for. And also don't forget that in April, Carnival officially raised the onboard gratuities about 50 cents per person per day. So if you have a cruise booked, expect to pay a little bit more, as well as the specialty dining venues like Cucina de Capitano, Asian Kitchen, and the Steakhouse, they'll go up about three bucks a person. But you know who's not raising their prices? me in the Midships merch store. If you wanna check out some of the coolest cruise swag around, there's a link in the description below. I see somebody just picked up the I Bought the Drinks Package shirt. Yeah, I keep an eye out on who's buying. I know exactly who you folks are. And don't forget to check out my Amazon Influencer store. I have it set up just for you. If you wanna take a look at everything I take with me every time I cruise, from the simple and mundane passport holder to the more mundane magnetic wall hooks that you just can't live without once you've had them, Everything's available right there, and it does help support me and my work just a little bit. Thank you for taking a little bit of time to watch. Now let's get back into the cruise news. So the other day we talked about the federal mask mandate being struck down by a judge in Florida. Well, there's news emerging now from Port Canaveral and their CEO, John Murray, saying that even though there's no federal mandate in place, cruise lines are still in charge of their individual terminals as part of their overall security plan to get people on board their ships. So what that means is certain cruise brands and cruise terminals will end up having different policies in place from others. And I think what he's kind of getting at is you might cruise out of Port Canaveral aboard Royal Caribbean this week and you might have to wear a mask. And then maybe next week you cruise on Norwegian and they have a totally different policy in place in their terminal. This is hypothetical. Right now you still have to wear a mask everywhere at embarkation for cruise terminals, at least as of today. But like I said, things change really fast. And what that means is you're gonna have to do a lot more homework as a cruiser now than just simply showing up with a mask like you used to have to. Although probably the safest rule of thumb is just have it in your back pocket if you're not sure. That's what I would do. Now, with all that said, we've seen a lot of airlines already start removing these mask policies. We've seen more and more groups and organizations pivot away from requiring masks, especially in the travel sector. So I'd give it a couple weeks and see which major cruise lines start to kind of change these policies. Again, I'm cruising MSC on Sunday. You better believe I'm gonna be digging out a brand new mask since I threw mine away the other day for dramatic effect in that video. Isn't hindsight always 2020? And speaking of masks, the US Coast Guard has announced they'll no longer be enforcing the wearing of masks on any public maritime vessel, which includes cruise ships and cruise terminals. So all the balls have been set into motion right now to strip the travel industry of these masking requirements altogether. Now, like I said, the Department of Justice came out the other day, just late in the evening, and they claim they're gonna be fighting back against this ruling which is weird and why would they waste all of our tax dollars and their time doing it? Because the policy is set to expire in a few days from now anyways. So it's like, are we really gonna go through this whole song and dance just to prove a point as to who's got the longer stick? You know what I'm talking about, right? It doesn't make much sense to me, but again, I'm not an elected federal government official, so it seems like those folks are way better at wasting money than I am. Okay, there's really great news coming out about the cruise industry as a whole, but this is just a small little tidbit we're gonna talk about here. According to Port Canaveral, they're on track to set their single year passenger record ever, all time, this year, beating all the pre-pandemic records even. So that's just to tell you how many people are itching to get on a cruise again, which is really great news coming out from Port Canaveral. And that explains why so many of the cruises I've been on from there recently have been a little bit busier than I was even expecting them to be. And interestingly enough, a lot of these cruises are what are considered a short cruise. Essentially, that's any cruise under five nights. So like one, two, three, four, five night cruise. So it seems like people, while they're looking into cruise, they might be looking at shorter cruises for the time being, which means you might be able to snag a good deal on a longer cruise. Think six or seven night 
or 10 night plus cruises, you're probably gonna get your best deal there if those short cruises are becoming more popular. Hey, have you ever dreamed about cruising around the world? Just spending hundreds of days out on your balcony watching the ocean and the world go by you? Well, it's possible with MSC in 2024. I'm gonna tell you about it, but first, I'd like to extend an invitation for you to cruise along with me. We're going to cruise on the Carnival Sunshine out of Charleston, South Carolina. It's my group cruise. It takes place October 24th. If you'd like more information about how you can get on board, check out the link to the Facebook group in the description below this video. All right, now let's talk about this MSC 2024 World Cruise. All said and done, it's a 121 day itinerary that includes stops in 52 destinations and 31 different countries. Embarkation begins January 4th in Civita Vecchia. That's Rome, for those of you who aren't in the know. Well, it's not really Rome, but that's the port you would get off at to go see Rome. So we'll call it Rome, even though Civita Vecchia is way more fun to say. Try it. Can you spell Civita Vecchia? No cheating, post your answer in the comments below. I'm curious, I know I couldn't spell it. Civita Vecchia. So if you made it this far into today's episode, thank you so very much. You're one of my biggest supporters and I really appreciate you. Now YouTube has recently changed their algorithms and now more than ever, a thumbs up button, comments on videos or sharing these videos to other cruisers go further than ever. So I'd really appreciate if you interacted just a little bit more with today's episode. Thanks for stopping by the channel today and until tomorrow, we'll see on the midships. Oh, and also, you know how you get before your cruise, you're always just worried that you're not going to pass your COVID test. Yeah, I started taking them again already, but my actual COVID test is tomorrow. Don't forget, we're doing a live stream for the sail away on MSC Divina. And I'm going to take you around their island. Hoo -hoo -hoo. It's going to be a good time. Lola.